I didn't realize it was so formal, so uh, this will be fairly informal between all of us. I'll just sort of lead with some questions um, and sort of allow them to answer them, and I'll answer them as well, and sort of we'll just <coughs> speak for about 30 minutes or 40 minutes, and then we'll open it up to Q&A and um, go from there, okay? Um, okay. Um, for each one, since it's sort of different, it's good we cover the full gamut, basically, between theater, television, film, and daytime television as well. We sort of have everything covered here. So let's start down there with Paul and just sort of talk about, it's, one of the questions is, what's the casting process like? Walk us through the stages of who you hire and who you collaborate. So just take one of the movies you just sure. recently worked on and sort of say how the process works for you. Okay, well they are all, even those three or four that were mentioned in that little, um, bio there are were completely different. So I think um, an average film for us, if there is one, is probably something like Animorph, which was a uh, second time director, which Willem Dafoe starred in, which finished shooting in January. And I'll just take that as an example, because it's sort of average. It's not a big studio film, which the Oliver Stone's movie was, obviously. It had a different set of parameters. But generally speaking, um, it basically, it works like this. <laughs> we, get, we get hired by the producer or studio and on a project by project basis. So in our case, we're not on contract to you know, Paramount or whomever. Um, so for Animorph, the producer, it was an, it's an independent film. The producer hired us to cast every speaking part. It's shot in New York, so we cast everyone who opens their mouth and says something um, that's in the script. We could get into SAG rules about who casts whom, but that's kind of arcane and not that interesting. Um, so what we do is we, in this case, wanted to cast the lead, which was De Willem Dafoe, and then the sort of three or four principals after him, which were Scott Speedman and Peter Stormare, um, Amy Carlson, um, and I'm leaving someone out, Clea Duvall. Uh, after those were cast, and that's a process by which they didn't audition for those parts. Um, well, Amy Carlson did, actually. But <laughs> Dafoe, obviously. I was just going to say, Amy got that um, off. <laughs> Dafoe, you know, doesn't have to audition for the lead role in the movie. So we built the cast around him and got Scott Speedman, who was, for various reasons because of the script, a good counterpart. It's a cop, it's a serial killer thriller. He plays his partner and they were a good match. Um, the director met with Clea Duvall and a couple other young women for this other junky runaway role. And we auditioned some uh, women for Amy's role. Um, in this case, since it's kind of interesting, actually sort of average for an, in, in, an independent film, this, was, this casting was done in, uh, what's this, 2006? Last, uh, summer 2005. And then, for reasons unbeknownst to me, since we really are hired serfs in this case, um, the project fell apart. And it was, uh, we were not active on it for about six months. And the whole thing came back again. And Amy, for example, Carlson, who plays a supporting role, had auditioned in June of 05, and then in, uh, maybe it was 04, I can't remember. Anyway, regardless, six months later, I'm calling her agent saying, remember that movie she auditioned for six months ago? Well, we want to hire her. And so the whole thing was back up and rolling again. Um, once that lead cast was in place, we put out what's called a breakdown. Um, Real quick. I'm just curious, yeah. and they may be also, this is an independent film, and the, the funding does fall apart a lot in independent film. You will work on a project for several years and mm -hmm. deal with availability. But what was the budget, uh, give it's or a, take? It's about a $5 one? million dollar movie. Okay. Um, Sorry. A breakdown is, there's a company called Breakdown Services, um, which, whose sole purpose existence is to provide material to agents and managers for actors. And they... Uh, Take the take the script and break will break it down into every speaking part, and then it goes out on the on the internet and agents and managers have access to. I guess I think they get an email when one goes out. I'm not exactly sure how it works. So there were I think 52 speaking roles in this movie. So that's everyone from Defoe down to the cop who says, you know, please put on those rubber gloves, which is a one line day player <laughs> role that we had to audition people for and cast. And uh, we would bring in actors anywhere from. You know, for the, for, the, for the medical examiner who had, I don't know, one scene that was a couple of pages, we brought in, you know, 12 guys. For the cop who says, please put on the rubber gloves, we brought in, I think, five people. You know, so everything's relative to the, to the size of the <laughs> role. You want to sort of cast the appropriate net. The other thing that, that I like to do, at least, 
um, depending if the movie takes place in New York, we um, started. I always make a wall, and put up Defoe and Scott Speedman and everybody in the movie. And since the movie took place in New York, we wanted to make an ethnic and racial mix that was reflective of, you know, this world, the world of this movie. And then we took that into consideration when casting day players. Um, so in any event, I'm getting ahead of myself. Agents and managers then send us submissions for all these parts. So we'll get anywhere from, I mean, it's ridiculous. You know those plastic postal service bins that people put on the street? We'll take one, we'll use one of those per project. Generally speaking, and that's, that, those are our file cabinets. For Animorph, shot in New York, everyone needed to be, needed to live in New York or have a place here under Screen Actors Guild rules. Um, I'd say three of those bins were filled with submissions from, actor, from act, uh, agents and managers and actors directly. And the volume of mail and the size of my office prohibits opening things from actors directly most of the time. Um, so let's say just to pick a number, we get, I don't know, 500 submissions from all over, mostly from LA and New York, and then call in a dozen actors, like I said, for the coroner role. So that's a pretty, that's a pretty <coughs> decent example of the law of averages in terms of how much work there is relative to how many actors there are trying for that, trying out for that part, um, or who want to get that part. And we. It, again, it, it differs from movie to movie. In this case, the director didn't feel like he needed to see every person who was going to speak. I also worked on a film called um, The Notorious Betty Page, which Mary Heron directed, which is out right now. She, for whatever reason, because that's the way she works, wanted to meet everyone who spoke, ever, who opened their mouth ever. So she was in every session. Henry Miller, the guy who directed Animorph, you know, was OK with me putting people on tape, and then he would watch it. Uh, during his location scouts or whatever at night, and then he would say, I like these three people. Let's you know, call them back or whatever. By and large, that's a general, mm -hmm. you know. Um, generally has anywhere from like 25 roles, could be 35 roles. Um, so we quickly read it. Um, we generally get like the first two acts, and then they funnel the last two acts to us. So you kind of get it like hour by hour throughout the day. Um, so day one, we read it. We write our own breakdown and get it out as soon as possible. Um, and we know the minute it's gone out, because the phones start ringing off the hook, um, and the fax machine goes crazy with everyone faxing their suggestions, which is great. Um, and then you know we make lists of ideas for the leads. There's generally two or three guest leads in each episode, the biggest, most crucial roles. Um, and start checking those actors' availabilities and requesting tape, either a DVD or some type of VHS demo reel. Um, so generally, then on the second day, we have a session with our producer and director for the episode. Um, and that first session, it's really thrown together very quickly. Um, it's ideas just off the top of your head, maybe someone you met the week before or a month earlier who this role would be perfect for. Um, and that, it's a good way to do it. I mean, it's very fast to have it the next day, but it's good because it tells me immediately if we're all thinking on the same page. Mm -hmm. So, and that is <coughs> the most important thing is I think the communication early on. Um, we have a concept meeting and discuss kind of how we see the characters and who would be kind of the prototype for one of the roles. Um, and a lot of times, the thing with television is the script is constantly changing. Things are in flux. And when they hear the script in the very first session, you realize, oh, this character doesn't work, or this should really be younger, or this guy should be Hispanic instead of Caucasian. Um, so we just kind of flush that out on the second day. Um, and then the third day, I see lots of actors myself, uh, which is called pre-reads. And the fourth day, we have another producer session, which is generally a huge session of actors. I, would, I think it lasts about four hours in the afternoon. Um, and by that day, we've made offers to certain kind of name actors for the leads. And we kind of know where we are um, at that point. And sometimes we are cast after that day, or we have an additional third session um, two days later. 
and then the seventh and eighth day of each little cycle, we do the deals where we negotiate the money, which it's pretty straightforward um, in television. And we basically which is also primetime television is also SAG. Right, SAG. Some shows actually like Rescue Me and All Daytime and uh, Rescue Me and actually a lot of cable shows now are becoming AFTRA, which is not common, but that also happens. But most of them are still for the, the major networks are still SAG contract. Um, I work at Manhattan Theater Club, which is a not for profit. So. Uh, in my world, the playwright and the director basically have equal say in who is going to be cast and then the producers of MTC themselves. And I think you guys would probably agree with this. No matter what your cast of characters are in terms of who is in quote unquote charge in casting, being a casting director, I feel, is like working for the UN. Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of it is about diplomacy given whatever creative and producing organization you are working with. Yes. Um, and in theater, there's sort of this mystique that somehow it's a democracy because it's not for profit, which is completely untrue. <laughs> um, uh, basically what happens, uh, I'm given a script and I will read it and I will then come up with these lists that we're talking about. Uh, I started in MTC in 96, I think. Between 96 and now, commercial theater has undergone not-for-profit theater has undergone a major transformation influenced by commercial theater in terms of looking for stars for star casting. And for me, I feel like it was when Nicole Kidman came in the Blue Room and it was sort of the first superstar mm -hmm. in a while that had come to New York and it created a hysteria that's kind of like Julia Roberts in, you know, in Three Days of Rain now. So my first and probably most frustrating step working for not-for-profit, which I choose to work for. I, I work for not-for-profit because I want to. I, I love what we produce, not Great always, theater. but I do feel fortunate to have worked with a number of playwrights that I sort of grew up admiring. Uh, so my first step is writing the list that will inevitably include Meryl Streep, Glenn Close, Sigourney Weaver. Like literally I could almost copyright it and just like pop it up. <laughs> and. Uh, Every director and every playwright will eventually want me to check the availabilities on Meryl Streep, Sigourney Weaver, Glenn Close, and inevitably it will be no. And it's kind of like throwing spaghetti against the wall and <laughs> hoping something sticks. I'll take that as an example because it's sort of average. It's not a big studio film, which Oliver Stone's movie was, obviously. It had a different set of parameters. But generally speaking, um, it basically it works like this. We get, we get hired by the producer or studio and on a project by project basis. So in our case we're not on contract to, you know, Paramount. Right. So just take one of the movies you just sure. recently worked on and sort of say how the process works for you. Okay. Well they are all even those three or four that were mentioned in that little um, bio there are were completely different. So I think um, an average film for us, if there is one, is probably something like Animorph, which was a uh, second time director which William Defoe starred in, which finished shooting in January. And I'll just take or remember. Um, so for Animorph, the producer, it was an, it's an independent film. The producer hired us to cast every speaking part. It's shot in New York, so we cast everyone who opens their mouth and says something um, that's in the script. We could get into SAG rules about who casts whom, but that's kind of arcane and not that interesting. Um, so okay. Um. For each one, since it's sort of different, it's good. We cover the full gamut, basically, between theater, television, film, and daytime television as well. We sort of have everything covered here. So let's start down there with Paul and just sort of talk about, it's, one of the questions is, what's the casting process like? Walk us through the stages of who you hire and who you collaborate. I didn't realize it was so formal, so uh, this will be fairly informal between all of us. I'll just sort of lead with some questions. Um, and sort of allow them to answer them and I'll answer them as well and sort of we'll just <coughs> speak for about 30 minutes or 40 minutes and then we'll open it up to Q&A and um, go from there. Okay? Um, 